Hey guys, welcome back to Brick House Vintage. My name's Heather, and today we are gonna be doing a makeover on this beautiful vintage dresser. Now don't worry, we won't be covering up all that gorgeous wood with paint. We will be painting part of it, but a lot of it is gonna be us revitalizing this gorgeous wood and letting its natural beauty shine. So if you wanna see this vintage dresser makeover, keep on watching and don't go away. So the first thing we do, as always, is disassembly and some minor repairs. And as I always mention, make sure you number your drawers if they're not already numbered so you know where they go back into. I'm gonna go ahead and use this quick wood. Uh, this is my first time using it, but it's basically you know a two-part putty. Uh, you pick a piece off, you just kind of knead it around and mix it all together and apply it into the spot that you want to fix. And overall, this piece wasn't in terrible shape, uh, but there was some you know veneer damage here and there on the sides. Um, there was you know little damage, dings and, and scratches on some of the uh, front corners there. Um, but so I'm going to try to keep as much of this wood as I can. So the drawers, the top, um, and possibly the legs, we're going to try to keep wood if we can and just bring out the natural beauty in the wood. Next, I start doing a nice sanding on top. I start with 150 grain sandpaper on this one. It was kind of a thin finish to begin with, so I didn't have to start real heavy with a 40 or 60 grit. I just started with the 150 and it started working pretty well. Again, as always, uh, you know, most pieces that you're going to be working on more than likely have veneer on it. Um, and if it does, you want to make sure when you're sanding like this that you don't sand too deep and you sand through that because then, you know, it could really mess with your refinishing ideas um, on what you're planning to do. So you just have to make sure that you're, you know, not going too deep on that. Um, now, on a piece like this, you can see there's some watermarks and some other, you know, scratches and, and deep imperfections there. I'm going to work out as much as I can, but if I don't get it all out, you know, if there's some minor ones left, it'll just add to the character. I'm just going to take off the hardware here and start getting the drawers ready for sanding. And I'm going to do those the same way I did the top with a 150 grit sandpaper. And I am going to be using these same poles again. Uh, they're a nice brass, uh, solid brass pole. So we're going to clean those up and we're going to reuse those. And I think it'll complement the wood and the, the color that we're going with very nicely. So again, since we're using those same poles, I'm not going to go too deep with the sanding here around these marks uh, where the the poles were because they should fit right over the same imprint um, you know obviously if you're going to use a different knob you want to take that into account and try to work that out a little bit more but again you want to be careful that you don't go through your veneer and then you just take a 220 grit sandpaper and kind of even it out a little bit make it a little bit smoother get some of the uh, the swirl marks out from the orbital sander and just already uh, taking that finish off and looking at this wood, I, you know, it just looks like it's going to be so beautiful when we put a new finish on it. So it's pretty exciting when you take that finish off and you see a nice, beautiful wood like this underneath. And this is why we definitely wanted to preserve it and try to do something a little more natural and bring out that beauty. And I'm going to take the 220 grit sandpaper and do the same thing to the top. Just kind of smooth it out, go with the grains. And I'm also going to hit some of the spots that I hit with the quick wood just to smooth those out. Now I had debated whether or not to leave these front legs wood. Um, I knew that it would be beautiful if we did, but it's a lot of work to hand sand these. But I tried it 
just a little test spot with uh, 150 grit sandpaper just to see how easy it would come off and it actually came off pretty easy so I decided it was worth the extra work and just went ahead and sanded those down um, so that we can finish those the same way we're going to finish the drawers and the top. And sometimes putting in a little bit of extra work like this just you know really adds to the final touches. And I did use a 150 grit sandpaper to start and then I came back over with a 220 and smoothed it out a little bit and got some of the um, kind of darker spots out that were still existing after the first sanding. I also just gave the whole side a scuff sanding just to kind of smooth it out, uh, take some of the roughness down and get it ready for a nice coat of paint. I tape it off just to make it a little bit cleaner, um, but if some splatters up or some gets up there, it's not a huge deal. It just kind of makes it a little bit easier. And I'm going to do the same thing to the legs. And now Heather's going to start as she always does. Um, she's going to clean the piece down with, you can use either a TSP or Dawn dish soap and water, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, but you want to make sure you clean your piece first, get all the grease and grime off and make sure you have a nice clean surface to start painting on. And now this is our first time painting with this uh, mango chalk paint. And now this is a chalk paint in the traditional sense. It's a real chalk paint. It's not a mineral paint mixture or anything. Um, so we were kind of excited to try this. We haven't used a true chalk paint in, in a while. Um, and this paint just paint is so smooth and Heather loved it. We're probably going to try a few different colors, um, you know, and try some different projects in it. But it painted real nice. It had really nice coverage. So I'd recommend trying it if you're looking into, you know, different types of actual chalk paints. And this color in particular was Jocelyn. It's a really nice green. And as you can see, this is the first coat and it's just covering so well. Um, a lot of times, you know, the first coat is kind of like a crumb coat, so to speak, um, in, in baking terms. Um, you're just trying to get, you know, a nice coat on just to get everything covered and get a nice surface kind of sticking. Um, but this, this chalk paint in particular was just covering very well. And of course, we can't forget the top piece. And after the first coat is dry, we go back and put a second coat on. And as I mentioned before, this is, I mean, this chalk paint was pretty smooth and had a really nice uh, feel to it. Some chalk paints you need to water down more than others. They're pretty thick to start. Uh, this chalk paint had a very nice consistency and it, it went on really nicely, really nice and smooth. So next I'm going to go and do a little bit of finish sanding here. Uh, I'm going to use a 320 grit sanding block to start and what I'm going to do is just go over kind of all the sides, the flat surfaces, just really lightly and try to smooth it out. Um, I'm not looking to, you know, get a real deep sanding here. I don't want to fully distress it. I'm not pushing super hard at all. I just kind of want to give it a nice smooth surface and when you sand chalk paint like this, uh, it gets like a nice kind of silky finish to it. And then when you go back over with your wax or your top coat, it'll kind of get a nice rich color back to it. And next I'm going to use a 400 grit sandpaper and just kind of go around, get some of these areas that I couldn't get with the sanding block. And for this, I'm actually going to push a little bit harder on some of these spots and distress just a little bit. Not too much though. I want this to have more of a kind of clean look to it with just, you know, a few spots of detailed distressing. Then I just use a lint-free cloth to wipe off all the uh, dust on top. 
and get it ready to apply our SFO. And I'm using uh, this SFO, stain finishing oil in natural. So it'll darken up the grain a little bit, uh, obvi obviously add protection to it, but it's not gonna change the kind of color drastically. It'll, it'll leave those nice rich wood grains. And again, this you can apply with a brush or with a rag. You know, you apply it, leave it sit for, you know, around 15 minutes, let it soak in. And then you come back with a dry cloth afterwards, you know, after that 15 minutes and you wipe off the excess. And you can apply as many coats as you want. Um, just, you know, follow the directions and go through the waiting times. Um, so when you can apply your second coat, you know, e each coat adds durability. Um, so for, you know, tops like this, uh, or if you've seen our dresser TV stand, you know, things like that, I usually use uh, three coats at minimum just to kind of build up that durability. And then I'm going to use the same process on the drawers. And as soon as I started applying it to this drawer, and it started pulling that wood grain out, that's how you know you made the right decision on this type of finish. Because that's just gonna preserve those beautiful grains and give it a nice, deep, rich finish. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go and clean up these uh, brass poles a little bit. I'm gonna use the vinegar method. So basically you're gonna bring uh, vinegar up to a boil, put your hardware in for about you know 10 to 15 minutes, let it boil, you know, remove it from the vinegar, let it cool down, and then you can work on cleaning it up. And now that our hardware is cooled off, I'm going to use a wire brush and just kind of scrub these down a little bit. Now I would recommend using a fine steel wool. Works a little bit nicer and it's a lot less prone to scratching. Um, but for these pieces, I didn't have any steel wool on hand, you know, right now. So I ended up using these brushes, but uh, these poles are really detailed and you wouldn't see kind of any of the you know, scratching if it did occur. Um, so I wasn't too worried about these, but I would recommend using a really fine steel wool if you can. And as I did with the top and the drawers, I'm going to apply the SFO to these legs as well. And you'll see kind of some of the dark finish on the legs here yet in the crevices. And that's not a big deal, uh, especially, you know, with kind of the dark grains in the drawers and things like that. I didn't want to go too heavy on it. I kind of wanted to let some of that in there just to give it contrast. Uh, and I think it actually turned out really nicely. You can work that out if you want, if you want to take the time to go in there and kind of fine sand that. Uh, but for, you know, in most cases it just adds character. Uh, I got the majority of it off and you know, I think the rest of it just kind of blends well with the rest of the grains and just adds to the beauty of it. And next it's time for the wax. Uh, we're using the Miss Mustard Seeds Furniture Wax. We're just gonna kind of buff that on and give it a nice coating. And as you can see here, it's bringing back that kind of original rich color. And let it soak in for a few minutes and then we're gonna come back and buff out the excess. Now for the most exciting time, the reassembly. So I'm gonna start by putting the wheels on, and then we're gonna attach the top and the drawers. And this is really when you get to see everything coming together and you know see the whole picture in one shot. Um, but before I put the drawers in, I'm gonna just use some of this beeswax on the tracks inside uh, just to make the drawers run a little bit smoother. and then we reattach the hardware. I 
And I just think those brass poles with that nice dark grain and along with the green paint, I just think that's such an awesome combination every time we do it. And the last finishing touch is I'm going to use some of this Howard uh, feed and wax just to wipe down on the inside of the drawers. It gives it a nice rich look, kind of takes out some of the scratches and it smells really good as well. It has like a citrus smell to it. So it's just a nice finishing touch. And you just kind of rub it in and then you wipe off the excess. So that is it everybody. Uh, you know, I think it turned out great. It has a nice kind of classy feel to it. Uh, those wood grains are just beautiful. I'm, I'm glad that we could preserve a lot of it. Um, so I think it's a nice contrast with the green paint, the nice dark grains, and those brass poles. So hopefully you guys like it as well. Thanks for watching this vintage dresser makeover. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We do one new makeover every week, and we'd love for you to stick around. If you'd like to see more makeovers, you can also check out these videos right here. We'll see you next time, guys.